Hi, and thank you for joining me on another episode of the Tech Exec Podcast, where we create world-class engineering teams. I'm your host, Aviv Ben Yosef, advisor and coach to tech executives worldwide, the author of the new book, The Tech Executive Operating System. And my intention here is to help you triple your team's impact per engineer. Today, our subject is family ties. I want to go back to a story. I served in the Israeli intelligence corps in a unit where I was basically just coding as part of my military service. And I don't know if you know it, but in Israel, service is compulsory for most citizens. Therefore, most males end up serving at least three years. And I remember that in my subunit, we had a team where I would say that like 90% of the people in there were the best of the best. When it comes to bringing on 18-year-olds based on potential and seeing what they amount to eventually without having the ability to hire people with past experience, I think they did overall an incredible job. And most of the team were really talented, motivated, bright, but there were a few, you know, black sheep in that herd. People who eventually turned out not to be as motivated or as capable as the average person on that subunit. Now, the issue when it comes to compulsory service is that it is really hard to get rid of someone. You can't really fire someone who's not a good match. If something completely, completely out of line would have happened, they would have been moved. But as a rule, once you get there, you're there till you finish your service. No one's going to fire you. You're not going to be sent home saying, we're sorry, you're not just good enough of a coder. And I remember being 19 years old, 20 years old, realizing this and thinking, man, I really wish that I was working in a company so we wouldn't have to work around these people who end up coming to the office every day doing bad work and I was then told to work twice as hard to fix whatever they were doing. This is literally what my commander told me. We have to give them work and I know that we're going to have to work harder to undo their messes later. And what do you know? Let's fast forward over a decade I've worked with dozens of companies worldwide, and what am I seeing? I'm seeing that too many leaders are afraid to take action, to change their teams, to acknowledge the fact that they've made bad decisions in hiring, or be too shy to provide the right feedback to help pull their people forward enough so that they grow and adjust to the team better, so that they provide real value. And let's go back to the first sentence of this podcast. I said, I want to help companies triple their impact per engineer. And what do you know? Sometimes to reach that, you have to let go of bad engineers, of engineers who are not a good fit for your team at this specific point in time. Treating your company as if it were a family, as if it were a democracy, all of those I'm sorry, but I do not believe that's what it takes to create an excellent team. And I do believe that work eventually is a sort of a framework for us to socialize. And we do want to have a good time during the day-to-day. It's not just rote work and nothing else. Nevertheless, we cannot allow ourselves to put the stress on this pseudo-family thing. Because... Bottom line is, if someone is not delivering, you have to do something, right? I'm not going to get rid of my brother because he is not doing his work as a solid brother. You can't do that, right? And I'm not saying anything specifically about my brothers. They're excellent. But you cannot get rid of family. That's what family means. That is not the same when it comes to work. You know that. I know that. Everyone knows that. And so it is this sort of lip service that I really hate because we either make the bad decisions prolonged because we are trying to pretend that this is a family, or we actually believe it 
in a way that means that we're not actually correcting things. We're not pulling our people forward. So stop it with this family mambo jumbo. You care about your people. You have great values. You want to provide them with a great work environment. You want to provide them with personal growth, equitable remuneration, good work-life balance. All of that is right, but this is not a family. If someone is not up to par, they either have to make progress to become better or they need to move on. Maybe it means moving to someplace else in the organization. But I hate seeing organizations kind of try and work around all sorts of issues with their people and the team. Like, as an example, you know how if one of your arteries is starting to clog, sometimes what the body will end up doing is create new veins to try and go over that obstacle. When you throw a log into a river, the water will flow faster around the edges of that log as it tries to overcome it, as the same flow tries to keep flowing. This is how organizations eventually try to pay the price of having these people. This is some sort of organizational debt. If you have someone who is not a good manager and you let them stick to that position for years, you are doing that team a disservice and frankly, you are doing that person a disservice. If you cannot coach them to become better, you owe them the candor to tell them that they are not doing a good enough of a job in that role and move them. Yeah, it can be hard on their egos. It's not easy. But believe me, doing the wrong thing for yourself day in, day out is not easier. And I have seen several times in my past how when someone moves from one company to the next, they might actually work better there. Because, for example, it might not be that that person is a bad manager, period. It might be that in that specific culture, given some issues from the past, how their colleagues view them from the past, and whatever habits they have been accustomed to, all of those end up meaning that they are not a good match in your company, but as they move to a new company, they have a blank slate, they can start from scratch, there's no prejudice, all of a sudden those people can rise to the occasion over there and become those real managers that they wanted to be. I've seen it several times. So you might actually be doing everyone a favor. It's a win-win-win situation. I'll give you another example. In my book, The Tech Executive Operating System, I mention an anecdote which I've noticed over the past few years. And that is when I'm helping a transition between one VP of engineering to the next, often as part of that process, the predecessor says something like, oh, just so you know, there's X and Y. I was this close to letting them go, but didn't want to pull the plug because I knew I was going to be moving on. Do you want to let go of them right now? I can do it with you. Or would you like to give them a second chance? I would say that pretty much every time the newcomer says, no, 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 let me try. And, you know, again, this isn't some huge research, but statistically for me over the at least five times this has happened in the past two years, always, 100% of the time, those people who were on the chopping block before ended up not staying six months into the transition. Either the newcomer realized they weren't a good fit, or merely the fact of having someone new trying to change things made those people realize they weren't a good fit. So... It is fine that we do our best, that we try, that we provide people with second and third chances. But at the end of the day, there comes a point where you have to make a decision and consider the fact that this is not a family. This is an organization with the intention of providing impact and value. Only by having that sort of a standard and aiming for it can you make sure 
that you have amazing impact per engineer in your organization. That's it for this week. Thank you for joining me. If you want to get a bunch more of ideas like this, I urge you to get a copy of the Tech Executive Operating System. Link is in the show notes. And also, if you haven't yet, do subscribe to my newsletter, the best online newsletter for tech execs. The link is in the show notes as well. Thank you and talk to you soon.